Good evening everyone, I'm Nat Adamopoulos and welcome to Full On Football, the only TV show that promotes local South Australian football. Well it's Friday the 13th tonight and it might be unlucky for some, but we're very lucky here on Full On Football. Of course a couple of weeks ago uh, we managed to spend some time with John Aloisi down at uh, his workplace Aloisi Ceramics and we were able to talk to him about what he's been up to over the last few years, how his time he spent in Spain, of course the Asian Cup and his uh, thoughts about how Australia's going to go and of course that famous moment in Australian football history where he scored the penalty that sent Australia to the 2006 World Cup. Um, he was the man who basically changed it all on his own by taking that fifth penalty and so without further delay we'd like to get full on with John Aloisi. From one little spot kick that took Australia to the 2006 World Cup, today we're talking to John Aloisi. Welcome to Adelaide, John Aloisi. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, is it nice to be home? You haven't been here for about one and a half years and uh, good to catch up with the family and friends? Yeah, no, it's brilliant to be home. I don't get home very often. Like you said, 18 months ago was the last time I was back after that famous night, the scoring that penalty and the... Uh, I've only been back for a couple of days now and uh, it's good to see my family, friends and to come down here and, uh, and help out at uh, Aloisi Ceramics. Yeah, it's fantastic and I hear that the business is going really well from uh, Tony, so that's good to hear. Yeah, it's good to hear and uh, you know, it's a pity I don't get down uh, often enough but uh, at least uh, they're doing well without me, that's the main thing. Yeah, well, the name in itself is uh, doing well. Uh, look, of course, you're only here for a few days and then you're going over to Asia to join your teammates, the Socceroos, for the Asian Cup. Um, you looking forward to that? Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting tournament. Um, I don't think they're talking too much about it here in Australia yet, but uh, once it's underway, I'm sure everyone will because uh, it's a tournament that's massive in Asia. Um, uh, soccer is big over there, uh, it's a very populated place and um, you know there's going to be a lot of uh, supporters and uh, a lot of people following the, the Asian Cup and we're hoping that we can go all the way and win it. Yeah well you do rate Australia as a good chance and of course it's a new era for Australia, we're in the Asian Confederation, it's a, a tougher competition, higher quality opponents um, and you say that uh, you do rate Australia to get to the finals if not even perhaps win it if you play well. Yeah, it won't be so easy because um, this is the first time we've been in it. Um, we're not very experienced uh, at playing in Asia. Um, difficult conditions because it's going to be very hot and uh, humid there. Um, the Asians will be uh, a, l a lot more used to it than what we are. But uh, you know, the the players are already out there getting used to the the conditions and climatising, and um, we're hoping that we're going to be in good form come the the games. Yeah, well, we wish you well with that. Now, I mean, you're, you're acclimatised to being very flexible and, and playing in many different conditions. You've played in the three, really the three biggest leagues in football that there are, and that's, of course, the English Premier League, the um, Italian League and the Spanish League, and you've been quite a few years in the Spanish League. Can I assume that that's uh, your favourite league? Yeah, I have to say it is. Um, not only the Spanish League, uh, I think, is uh, one of the best. Uh, it's just a great place to live, and... Um, and my family love it there, and uh, so that helps. And and it's just a uh, you know it's good soccer. That everyone plays good soccer, and uh, you get big crowds and playing the likes of uh, well against the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona. It's uh, something special. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about Osasuna. Um, of course, you you went over there, and uh, a lot of people think that you, you know it might be all glitz and glamour. But you went through a time there for nearly well over 12 months, where you actually didn't get paid for your services, and you took on you were like the David and Goliath. You took on the club to make sure that they rectified that situation. Something that never been done before. Yeah, how did you know about? That? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the first year I was there, and um, I took them to to court and um, ended up uh, getting paid at the end and that was one of the I was one of the first players ever to do that and yeah but those things happen over in Spain um, occasionally you just have to get through it and um, and uh, not <laughs> worry about it too much because uh, yeah have to concentrate on your football and and just hope that uh, everything else works out. And of course uh, all in all a, a fairly good four years there with Osasuna because you did enjoy it in the end didn't you? Yeah no, I really loved it you know I got along with everyone at the club um, 
you know, I was sad to leave there, but um, uh, as you know, the football you never lasts forever. You have to move on sometimes, and uh, I just moved down the road really because uh, where I am now, Alaves, it was only 40, 45 minutes down the road, and I still get back to to watch Osasuna every now and then, and and uh, you know, I love going back to see everyone. Oh, that's fantastic. Look, let's have a look at some of the things. Um, you, in 2004, you represent Australia at the Olympics and, and you score three goals there. Then in 2005, you go to Confederations Cup and you score four goals there, two against Germany, two against Argentina, and you get awarded the bronze shoe. Was that uh, a great achievement for you or is it sort of a bit of, a oh, that's a bonus? No, it was a great achievement. Um, that was probably one of the highlights of my career was, uh, was scoring those four goals in the Confederations Cup because it was such a big tournament. Um, didn't get much publicity out here, but to score against Germany two goals in Argentina two, um, and I ended up uh, second leading goal scorer. I ended up getting the bronze boot because uh, I think Balak, the German, had to get it. <laughs> but we both scored four goals, and Adriano scored five. Uh, the Brazilian that plays at Inter Milan, mm -hmm. so it was uh, a massive achievement for myself. And uh, and I look back at that, and, uh, and I'm proud of uh, of scoring those. Uh, that will four goals in, in such a tournament. Oh, fantastic. Now of course you do get rave reviews after that and you end up in high demand and you're uncontracted. What a great position to be in. Yeah, well it was a great position and then um, I s was signing for Panathinaikos, the Greek club, and um, ended up failing a medical which was a bit disappointing but uh, you know there are things that happen and uh, just had to get on with it and I ended up uh, being lucky that I signed for Alaves after that. Yeah, of course, that, that in knee injury that you got quite a few years before that, were you surprised when they picked that up and then all of a sudden now you're left with no club? Yeah, I was surprised because uh, I picked up a knee injury was about six, seven years before that and, and played on it and uh, never had any problems with it and they didn't want to take a risk because uh, it would have been... For them, uh, I would have been their first choice striker. They're playing; they were playing Champions League, and they didn't want to take a risk if I get injured. But um, since then, I've never had any problems with my knee, and uh, I don't think I will. Fantastic! And of course, you said you did sign with Alaves. You had a two-year stint there, and uh, you say that the family loves Spain. Do you playing against some of these, you know, top the world's top players? Do you do you have to sometimes pinch yourself, or is it all you just take it in your own stride? No, you take it in your own stride because once you're out there, you don't really think about who you're playing against and uh, and uh, what you're doing. You just uh, concentrate on doing well and trying to win the game. And uh, you know, after maybe at the end of my career, I'll look back and uh, be happy with playing against um, the likes of Beckham and Ronaldinho and Ronaldo. But uh, when I'm out there, I just want to beat them and do my best. And and uh, we did end up beating Madrid and Barcelona, so I've. Uh, I was happy with uh, playing against the best and beating the best. I suppose that's one thing, once you cross that white line you get into game mode and uh, everything else doesn't matter, hey? Yeah, exactly. You, you only think about winning when you're, when you're on the pitch and uh, you don't even realise who you're playing against half the time. Now I want to talk about something that you've got this uncanny knack, it's almost like a sixth sense that you can predict when you're going to score these goals in these big matches. Now you did it when you were in the King's Cup, which is the Spanish uh, Cup final, you predicted you score a goal, I, even though it wasn't a winning goal, you actually did do that and you were uh, you're telling your wife that you're going to score this goal, you know, and then um, for weeks before the Uruguay, the qualifying match, you were doing the same thing, saying that you're going to score this goal that's going to take Australia to the World Cup. You were whispering in Lucas Neal's ear all the time, saying that you're going to do it, you're going to do it. I mean, that's almost like, not cockiness, but how can you be so sure that that's going to happen? Well, that's probably why it does happen, because uh, I put it into my head that it's going to happen. So uh, I don't think it's a sixth sense or that I can predict anything uh, in life, but um, it's because I put it in my head that, you know, that's what I want to happen and I'll do anything to make it happen and uh, you know it ends up <laughs> that it does happen and which is a, a bonus but uh, yeah the, you know the, the Spanish Cup final I was uh, sure I was going to score in and and I ended up scoring the equaliser with only about 10 minutes to go which was was unbelievable for myself it was my last game at Osasuna and um, we ended up losing an extra time it was unlucky but um, yeah they're against Uruguay and uh, I dreamt as a little kid that I'd score in the World Cup and uh, and I was happy to do that against Japan. It's amazing what, what, you, what you obviously love your football and it comes out when you play, you know, we watch you play, you can just see that you absolutely adore football. Yeah, I think uh, I, I've, 
you know, grown to love it even more through the years uh, because you know that, uh, well, especially when you get to 30, now I'm 31, that, um, you know, you might not have long left and you enjoy every minute of it. And uh, lately I've been enjoying my football more than ever and I hope to play on uh, a few more years yet. Here we go.